back to our channel today we are going to start scapula so to see this is the scapula bone which is present especially in the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage so you can see it's actually present in the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage and coming to its surfaces you can see this is a coastal surface uh, like which is towards the uh, uh, you know rib cage so coastal surface is nothing but like you can say is the anterior surface and the posterior surface is nothing but the dorsal surface so for example if you see here this is the posterior surface so how to identify whether it's anterior or posterior very simple the posterior surface of scapula is always presenting a spine of scapula so by the spine of scapula you can easily identify its posterior side and its a anterior side so we'll discuss about this anterior side also called as coastal surface it's mainly called subscapular fossa it's concave you can see like concave means it's like cave like structure means towards inside you can see it's a concave structure and forward it's having three longitudinal ridges you can see the ridges one two and three so these are the three longitudinal ridges and it's like rod like and uh, it acts as a liver mainly for the action of serratus anterior muscle and an overhead abduction of arm overhead abduction means you know adduction is towards your body side abduction means if you for example this hand if you are raising it above the uh, head then in that case our uh, this uh, scapula acts as a lever for the action of serratus anterior muscle now we'll discuss about the dorsal surface so coming to the dorsal surface uh, it is having a spine and it is in turn because of this spine the dorsal surface is divided into the smaller supraspinous fossa the above one and this one is some infraspinous fossa which is below so this both are mainly converged by means of a spinoglenoid notch actually here you will find the spinoglenoid notch it's actually between the spinous process and the you know this this is called as glenoid uh, cavity right so between them so it's called a spinoglenoid notch it will be over here like this it's lateral to the root of scapula so if you see this is the median size is the lateral side so it's lateral to the root of scapula and next coming to the borders so if you see the borders you can see this is a superior border which is very thin short and it's near to the root of coracoid process so it's better to see here this is a superior border near to the root of coracoid process this is a coracoid process this is acromion process right this is coracoid process and next coming to the lateral border so actually this is a lateral border the lateral border is thick its upper end have a infraglenoid tubercle you can see here this is the infraglenoid tubercle and the medial border is very thin and it is extending from the superior angle to the inferior angle so you know you need to understand the angles this is a superior angle this is an inferior angle and this is a glenoid angle so between the superior angle and inferior angle you will find the medial border of scapula now let us see the angles as i said this is a superior angle it gives uh, you know actually it is covered mainly by trapezius if you see in the cadaver and the inferior angle it's mainly covered by the latissimus dorsi and it moves forward round the chest when the arm is abducted so when you are abducting your arm mainly your inferior angle is moving round okay round the chest so that thing you can remember so superior angle is covered by our trapezius muscle and the inferior angle is covered by latissimus dorsi now coming to the lateral or glenoid angle it's broad and uh, you know it's bearing the glenoid cavity or fossa for the attachment of head of humerus next coming to the processes mainly you know we have three processes one is a spinous process one is a coracoid process another one is a acromion process so actually if you see the spinous process it's a triangular structure mainly it is having three borders uh, and also having two surfaces so mainly if you see the posterior border the posterior border having a crest of the spine this is a crest of the spine of scapula it has upper and lower lips if you see this is upper lip this is a lower lip right next coming to the acromion acromion if you see this one this is having two borders one is a medial this side is medial and this side is lateral border next coming to the two surfaces superior and inferior surfaces 
so actually we have the superior and inferior surfaces this is you can see this is superior surface and this is the inferior surface and also we are having a facet for clarity so sorry the superior surface and inferior surface is for acromion only acromion have superior surface is upper one inside from inside if you see that is the inferior surface of acromion and also facet for clavicle is present for the acromion you know acromion uh, joins with the lateral end of clavicle that is acromioclavicular joint as we already discussed in our clavicle video you can go and check there next coming to the coracoid process the coracoid process is forward and laterally placed you can see it's forward and laterally placed next coming to the side determination so how we will find it mainly the lateral or glenoid angle is present laterally and base a large cavity and the coastal surface if you see the coastal surface it's mainly concave to fit on the convex chest wall so it's concave to fit on the convex chest wall now let us see the muscle attachment i'll show another diagram so now we will discuss the muscle attachment so coming to the coastal surface first we'll discuss the coastal surface so multi pennate subscapularis this is a subscapularis it's a multi pennate muscle it mainly arises from the medial two third of subscapular fossa which is present anteriorly of the coastal surface and you have the supra spinatus actually now we'll go to the dorsal side uh, or back side of the scapula of course it's our spine so remember always when i'm talking about back side of scapula it represents with the spine so you can see uh, on above the spine you have the supra spinatus muscle in the medial two third of supra spinatus fossa it also includes upper surface of the spine yes and it's coming to infra spinatus which is from the medial two third of infra spinatus fossa and it is including the lower surface of the spine right this is the lower surface of the spine and next coming to the deltoid the deltoid muscle is arising from the lower border of crest of spine so if you see this is a crest of spine this lower border this is mainly forming a deltoid muscle giving origin to the deltoid muscle as i already said in clavicle video always remember the red color indicates origin and the blue color indicates insertion so here the deltoid supraspinatus infraspinatus subscapularis all of this having the origin from the scapula so the deltoid mainly is arising from the lower part of the crest of the spine right lower border of crest of spine and from the lateral border of acromion also as i said the acromion have the medial border and lateral border if you see this is the medial border this is the lateral border so deltoid muscle is continuously it is getting uh, origin from the lower border of crest of spine and also from the acromion lateral border and next the uh, actually this acromion fibers if you see the of this deltoid muscle acromion fibers they are also multi pennate next we'll check out the trapezius so if you see the trapezius it's inserted it's inserted to the upper border of crest of the spine and to the medial border of acromion right and also to the medial border of acromion next we'll see the serratus anterior so coming to the serratus anterior it will be attached on the anterior side so it is inserted so if you see the serratus anterior it is mainly inserted along the medial border of coastal surface so its one digitation is from superior angle to the root of the spine to the root of the spine like uh, can understand on the back side and uh, so its serratus anterior is along uh, the medial border of coastal surface right and next the two digitations are to the medial border only of the coastal surface the two digitations to the medial border and the five digitations to the inferior angle so if you see in the inferior angle there are five digitations so this is about the serratus anterior insertion now we'll see the long head of biceps bracket so actually the long head of biceps bracket if you see in this image here we'll get the long head of biceps bracket so here you can see the supraglenoid tubercle the supraglenoid tubercle mainly gives uh, you know origin to the long head of biceps brachii yeah here you can find out the long head of biceps brachii from the supraglenoid very easy to remember this is glenoid cavity right so about it above it is nothing but supraglenoid below is infraglenoid so from the supraglenoid there is long head of biceps brachii that too it's a insertion not insertion it's origin so always remember one trick that this is uh, the lateral border and this is the medial border always from the 
always from the lateral border there are all muscles getting originated in the case of scapula and always from the uh, medial border all muscles are getting always inserted so this is a trick to remember that always from the lateral border there is origin of muscles whereas on the medial border there is always insertion of muscles and you can see here the tip of uh, coracoid process from the tip of tip of coracoid process there is a short head of biceps brachii getting originated so if you see the short head, short head of biceps brachii and also coracobrachialis this both muscles get their origin from the coracoid process tip whereas uh, this um, long head of biceps brachii is getting originated from the supraglenoid tubercle and now we will discuss about the coracobrachialis yeah it is also arising from the medial part of tip of coracoid process next pectoralis minor pectoralis minor is mainly inserted to the to the medial border and the superior surface so if you see here this is a pectoralis minor it is mainly attached to the medial border and the superior surface of coracoid process so this is inserted so it is blue in color this is about pectoralis minor next coming to long head of triceps if you see the long head of triceps is getting originated from the infraglenoid tubercle and next we have the teres minor teres minor arrange uh, arise from the if you see here this is a teres minor and this is a teres major so in between the teres minor and the teres major there is circumflex scapular artery so teres minor teres major teres minor is getting originated from the upper two thirds of rough strip of dorsal surface along the lateral border if you see this is the lateral border this is the dorsal surface right so teres minor is getting uh, originated here and teres major this one teres major is mainly originating from the lower one third of rough strip on dorsal aspect of lateral border next coming to the levator scapula if you see this is getting inserted as i already said the medial border of the scapula on the posterior side is always having the insertions even on the you can see this is the anterior costal side right and this is its uh, medial border even on the either on posterior side or anterior side always the medial border is having insertion because on the coastal side there is serratus anterior insertion on the medial border and here on the posterior surface on the medial border there is insertion of you can see first the levator scapulae next the below it you will see the rhomboidus minor and next you will see the rhomboidus major so the levator scapulae is inserted along dorsal aspect of medial border from the superior angle to the root of the spine and next the rhomboidus minor is inserted to the medial border that to the dorsal aspect between the root of the spine and the inferior angle and next you have the rhomboidus uh, major is uh, yeah, up to the inferior angle and next coming to the inferior belly of homohyoid even the inferior belly of homohyoid you see in the coastal surface so if you see here this is the homohyoid inferior belly and this is arising from the upper border near the suprascapular notch so this is suprascapular notch so near it you will get the origin of homohyoid inferior belly next coming to the different ligaments so now we will discuss about ligaments in this diagram so the margin of glenoid cavity so where is glenoid cavity first you need to understand in this diagram so this is the glenoid cavity so in its margin mainly there is attachment to the capsule of shoulder joint of course the shoulder joint uh, capsule will be joined here you know because it need to articulate with the head of humerus right so there is glenoid labrum which is around the glenoid cavity and next you have the facet on medial aspect of acromion so coming to the acromion right this is acromion on its medial aspect means medial means towards inside right on the medial aspect of the acromion there is attachment to the capsule of acromioclavicular joint because you know uh, the clavicle will get and attached to its facet on the acromion next the coracoacromion ligament is attached to the lateral border of coracoid process so this is the coracoid process and to its lateral border there is attachment of uh, coracoacromial ligament so you can see here this is a coracoacromial ligament which is mainly attached to the lateral border of coracoid and the medial border of tip of acromion so you can see the lateral border of coracoid the coracoid continuous lateral border and also to the medial border of acromion tip of acromion so this is the coracoacromial ligament next you have a coracohumeral ligament so if you see here the coracohumeral ligament it is mainly attached to the root of coracoid process so this is coracoid process its root exactly the root of coracoid process you can find the coracohumeral ligament next you have the coracoclavicular ligament so 
Coreco clavicular ligament. Actually, that is uh, the Coreco clavicular ligament is not shown here, but uh, it's like mainly attached to the coracoid process. This is coracoid process, right? So here only the Coreco clavicular ligament will also attach. And trapezoid part on superior aspect, conoid part near the root. Actually, you know here the trapezoid part of clavicle and also conoid part they attach and they form the uh, joint here, right? They form the corego clavicular ligament already discussed in a previous video if you remember in the clavicle so that is formed here to the corecoid process only next coming to the suprascapular ligament in the name itself you can see suprascapular so we'll find out that suprascapular ligament over here so in the suprascapular notch only you'll get the suprascapular ligament actually you know the suprascapular notch is converted into a foramen like structure because of suprascapular ligament which will join like this and it will form a notch it bridge across the suprascapular notch and convert into foramen so if foramen is formed means something should transmit in it right so it transmits a suprascapular nerve so the suprascapular vessels lie above the ligament only remember this is very important the suprascapular nerve will pass into it but the suprascapular vessels will pass above it very important point next coming to the spinoglenoid ligament spinoglenoid ligament is nothing but attached to the spine of yeah here you can see the correct clavicular ligament as i said before the clavicle is uh, mainly trapezoid part conoid part which is present uh, you know in the lateral side of uh, inferior aspect lateral one third inferior aspect of clavicle right so they'll get and attach here so actually here you can see the spinoglenoid notch that is nothing but between the coracoid process and uh, you know glenoid process there will be a spinoglenoid notch in that even this one will be covered by a spinoglenoid ligament and even this one will be converted into a foramen so it will bridge the spinoglenoid notch and the suprascapular vessels and nerve pass deep to it so here actually both uh, nerve and also vessels everything will pass below this only but only the special thing about the suprascapular ligament is only the nerve will pass into the foramen and the vessels like artery and vein pass above the foramen so finally we have come to the end part that is about our ossification of scapula so actually uh, it has uh, the scapula has one primary center right uh, it has one primary center and seven secondary centers you know one primary center only one primary center but seven secondary centers whereas if you see in your uh, you know clavicle it has two primary centers and only one secondary center if you remember one secondary center is in the sternal end of the clavicle right and has two primary centers but here it has only one primary center and seven secondary centers so the one primary center is mainly near the glenoid cavity so you know this is the glenoid cavity right so here you have the first primary one primary center right during eighth week of development uh, it is starting its development from the eighth week and uh, one secondary center is present in middle of coracoid processes coracoid process here will have the one secondary center as i said total seven secondary centers among them one is here near the coracoid process and it is starting uh, its process from first year and fuse by 15 year you can see here appearance at first year fusion by 15 year done right and uh, this is secondary center but one secondary center and next you have subcoracoid center subcoracoid center which appears uh, in root of coracoid process so root you can see this is this one is a subcoracoid process in the root during 10 years and fused by 16 to 18 years you can see here appearance at 10th year and fusion by 16 to 18 years this is subcoracoid center this is also one of the secondary center next coming to the other secondary centers uh, two are present in acromion you can see here this is the acromion right so in the acromion you have two so two three four total four completed still three are remaining what others we'll find out the next one is one is in the lower two-third of margin of glenoid cavity so lower two-third of margin of glenoid cavity you will have one right and uh, and other one is in the medial border so you know this is a lateral border so in the medial border this one in the medial border you have one more which appear in puberty and fused by 25th year right so if two centers of acromion fail to unite sometimes these two centers of acromion fail to unite and seen as a fracture on radiographical examination in such cases the radiograph of opposite acromion will mostly 
reveal the similar failure of union so this is uh, about the ossification so total we got seven centers uh, total four five and four five six seven so total the seven centers are secondary centers only one primary center in the case of scapula so by this we completed the scapula anatomy next we'll start the humerus